Hi there, I'm Valerie, you're watching the Motorpress YouTube channel, and with this video we continue our series on full site editing. Today we'll take a deep dive into global styles. So without further delay, let's jump in. Global styles are a relatively new feature of WordPress and it allows users to set the overall layout and aesthetics of your site at a global level without having to edit individual blocks or pages. The global styles interface replaces the customizer and now it's the only way to customize styles with block themes. Again, let's revise some basic requirements. To access global styles, you must use WordPress 5.9 or higher. In this video, I'm going to be using WordPress version 6.4.2. Please be aware that if you're using another version of WordPress, there might be differences both in the interface and the functionality. Second, you must use a block theme. In this video, uh, I will be using Prime, a free WordPress starter theme by Motorpress, which offers complete full site editing support. You can download it uh, from official website or find it at wordpress.org. To find global styles setting, You'll need to go to Appearance, Editor in your admin menu. Wait for the main screen to load and then click inside the page that has loaded and in the top right corner, click on the Styles icon, which looks like a half-filled circle. This will open the global styles for your website. Then you'll see a list of all the different elements of your site that you can customize. And these are typography, colors, layout, and blocks. Some themes like 2024 include different style variations. With them, you can experiment with different fonts, colors, typography, spacing, block settings and more. Style variations are like alternative versions of your block theme. And you can easily swap them and enjoy the new look and feel of your website. If you don't see the browse styles option, don't worry, you'll have access to predefined sets of color palettes the theme authors has created for you. Now, let's take a closer look at typography. But before we proceed, please consider subscribing to our channel and don't forget to hit the little bell button to get notifications of the new video uploads. Once you click on the typography menu, you'll see various typographic elements of your site. Each item will allow you to change the font from a drop-down list of available fonts in your theme. Also, you can change the typography settings, including font size, appearance, and line height. The great thing is that as you pick your choices, you can see a preview of how it looks. If you don't like the result, uh, you can open the three dot menu and reset the changes. For the links, we have the same settings as we had in the text, but with the decoration. The decoration includes options for strike through and underline. 
some elements have additional settings that others don't. For example, for the headings, you can select the heading level. Letter spacing will allow you to set the space between each character of the text. And what's more, you can set the text to all caps, the first letter capitalized, or all lowercase. Next, we can customize the typography settings of the captions. Captions are used in the image and cover blocks. Last but not least, buttons. If buttons also include the text, consequently, the same typography settings uh, can be easily adjusted. To choose the shades you'd like to use for your design, we open the colors panel. The first option you will see here is for palette. Let's click on it. The palette panel opens to solids by default. Here you can edit the theme and default colors or add custom ones. Theme colors are set by your themes designers when creating the theme and used throughout your themes design. Default colors are shown in the block color settings when editing your pages and posts. You can edit both the theme and default colors. Alternatively, you can also add custom colors to your site's palette and these will be saved and available for you to choose from the color settings of your blocks. To add custom colors, click the plus button under custom. Choose your color from the color picker or enter a hex RGB or HSL color value. By default, it will be color one, but you can change the name if needed by clicking on it. So I'm clicking done to finish. And if your custom color doesn't impress you, you can remove it and start all over again. You can also click the gradients tab to add gradients to your color options. Just like with your solid colors, you can set theme, default and custom options. A slider will appear uh, that allows you to set the color that make up the gradient. First, you should select the type of gradient. Linear creates a gradient between the two colors along a straight line. Radial starts from the center and moves to the borders. If you select linear type, you can edit the number in the box uh, to select a custom value for the gradient angle. The Duotone filter option is a two-tone color effect you can apply to your image blocks like the image and cover blocks. Once you're done with your palettes, navigate back to the colors panel and right below the palette, you'll see the option to edit the color of the text, background, links, captions, buttons, and headings. In the layout panel, we control the width of your site's content area. Under dimensions, use the boxes provided to set the width of the main content area. Content controls the width of the blocks uh, when the alignment is set to known uh, in the blocks toolbar. Width uh, controls the width of blocks when the alignment is set to white in the blocks toolbar.
You can also adjust the padding for your website. Padding is the blank space, also called white space, around uh, the elements of your site. And there are four areas. You can adjust the padding. And by default, these are locked. And this means that when you adjust the padding, uh, it will update all four at once. But if you click the lock icon, you can change them uh, separately. With uh, block spacing settings, you can control the space between two blocks. And this setting appears for nested blocks. As for me, I don't need to change anything here, so I'll leave everything as it is. And finally, the blocks. The blocks section shows an entire list of blocks that you can customize on a site-wide level. The changes you make to blocks using the styles interface will affect every block of the type that you can have added to your site unless you have customized a block individually. Sure. The available options vary widely depending on the block that you're editing. So you might want to explore each one to see what you can change. To review the changes you made, I suggest using the style book. It's the one with the eye icon. The style book preview window contains six tabs. This will show you examples of all of your blocks will look after saving any styles changes. A user can click on a preview of a block and it will navigate them to the block level global styles where the block styling can be adjusted. Overall, this makes it easier for a user to preview changes uh, to block level global styles. you have some CSS knowledge and realize that the global styles won't meet your specific needs, then another menu uh, to explore is the CSS window. So click the ellipsis in the upper right corner, select additional CSS, type your CSS in the box provided, and you're done. This feature allows you to fine tune your styles even Further. To undo the custom styles you have applied, I click on Revisions and click Reset to Defaults. Once changes have been saved, you'll see the Revisions option. With its help, you can restore previous versions of your site's styles. So that's it for today. From this video, you learned how to effectively work with global styles. If you still have any questions, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching this video till the end, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye!